What's up guys, my name is Devin Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorial. Today we're gonna to teach you guys how you can create this sick pixel art sprite Pokemon effect in After Effects and Photoshop. This effect is a dope effect for music videos, visualizers, and you can really create some dope looks with it. And it's also super simple to create. Today we're just gonna be using Photoshop and After Effects. But first off, I do gotta mention where we're at. Right now, we got the craziest 11% tutorial location so far. We're here in the beautiful Tokyo, Japan. Right here, we have the Tokyo Tower in the background. It's it's not in frame, but trust me, it's fire. Look at this, we got the cherry blossoms. This is wild, this is sick. But hey, we're creating Pokemon Sprite pixel art in Japan. How, how sick is that? Come on. Before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure that you like this video and hit subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it really, really means a lot. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into tutorial. Now I'm gonna quickly mention that this effect is gonna be done in three separate parts. We're gonna have an Adobe Photoshop section, an entire section for exporting and then transferring, and then the After Effects animation segment. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start in Adobe Photoshop and we're gonna come over here and hit new file. We're gonna create a new custom file project and I'm gonna have you create dimensions of a width around 50 and then a height of around 70 pixels. So this is gonna be pixel art, obviously. So we're gonna have really, really small dimensions. We're gonna hit okay and boom. Now you see we have this really, really tiny uh, composition. So just go ahead, command plus to zoom in. Now we have our canvas. Now, pixel art sprites. You're probably not an artist, I'm not an artist. So how are we actually gonna go ahead and draw these sprites? Well, don't worry, the internet has us covered. The first thing you're gonna do is download a sprite template sheet. I just searched this one up and found it off of like Pinterest or whatever. I'm gonna link it down below in the description. Shout out to the artist. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna import your sprites all the way into your scene. Now you're gonna drag it up and just scale it around to find a sprite template that works best for you. For this tutorial, we're gonna be doing a sprite Pokemon template of no one else other than the queen herself, Ice Spice. You thought I was killing you? Bro, no one has ever done a Pokemon sprite of Ice Spice. Ice Spice, Ice Sprite, Ice Sprite, come on. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag our template in right here. And once we have a good Pokemon sprite, we're just gonna hit okay and load it in and boom, perfect. Now, if you loaded in your sprite template and it, the edges immediately turned a little bit blurry, one quick thing that you can do to fix this is come over here to file, go to export, and then click on your export preferences. Come over here to general and then click on image interpretation and make sure you check nearest neighbor preserve hard edge. If you have it on anything else other than that, then the edges will come out a little bit blurry and your sprite template will just be kind of messed up And because you know you can't really uh, edit and draw anything with that. Now that we have our sprite template loaded in, I'm just going to click the lock icon to lock it in and we're going to create a new layer by hitting this plus icon on the bottom right hand corner. Now click on your pencil tool and set the size to one pixel. And now it's actually time to go ahead and draw in some features to this pixel sprite to make it actually ice spice. Now this is the fun part. And this part is really entirely up to you. Make sure you're editing on this blank layer also. And the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and add ice spices infamous orange curly hair. Now this part, like I said, really just have fun with it. I'm not that great of an artist. You're probably a better artist than me, but like you, as you can see, I'm just really just, just drawing what I think will look good. And then we're gonna go ahead and just add a little hairline and boom, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the color for the inside and make that a little bit brighter orange, still on the dark side, and then color in. Now, a big thing with pixel art, always make the edges darker. Whatever color you're using to color the inside or you know fill anything in, just go change the color to make it a little bit darker and then do that all for the edges. It really helps just solidify the style and that's like, you know, just how they use shadows. Actually, drawing the pixel art is really fun, but we're gonna go ahead and fill this in. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in some little bit details. I'm gonna drag our pixel just a little bit darker again. And as you can see, I'm really just honestly just making this up as I go. I'm trying to add some little curls. And then I might make it a little bit lighter again, just to add some extra textures. And boom, perfect. Now that we have our hair piece done, we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the clothes. Now I'm just gonna copy the same outfit that Ice Spice wore in the Munch music video. What other better outfit to reference? Now I'm really gonna leave this part up to you. I want you to just really go in and just draw. Your drawing's not gonna be perfect, but when you're, once you really zoom out and after we add all the animation to our effect, it's really gonna be so unnoticeable. So right here, we just added her outfit from the Munch music video. And now lastly, of course, we can't top this 
this off without the ice spice chain. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in right here. Dude, ice spices chain is probably one of the most like unique chains I've ever seen. If you especially wanna highlight stuff, you can just always go ahead and just add darker iterations of whatever color that you're editing to just create a sense of depth. If we zoom out and you can see the chain is like, is, is there, it's obviously a chain and perfect. Now, once you have your first iteration of your sprite, what you're gonna do is you're simply gonna hold shift and just select all the layers that were a part of your sprite and then convert it and put it all into one folder. So I'm just gonna call this folder sprite one. Now, once you have our first sprite folder, go back into the folder and what you're gonna do is you're going to hit Command C on the sprite template layer and we're just going to paste that once again. And now what you're gonna do is you're just simply going to move it over to the next phase. If you have a sprite template, make sure to download one that has like different walking phases or moving phases so just so you can add and create that animation aspect to it. Now follow along carefully. In the first folder that we made, we're gonna reopen that right here and then I'm gonna have you copy and paste just all the assets that you drew onto your first sprite template and paste it above in the top layer. Now you can turn off the visibility of this entire bottom folder because we don't need to see it right now. And now your job is basically simply to just drag and adjust everything so that it fits the new walking sprite. So there may be some areas that you need to adjust like these pants over here, we might have to erase some areas. So you can simply use an eraser tool to just get rid of some parts if you need to make adjustments. Or like right here, how her hand kind of overlaps on her jeans so we can just go ahead and erase those segments. And then same with her chain and tank top, we can just go ahead and drag those down a little bit. The shoes, we might have to just redraw entirely so you can just select those and delete those shoes. And then we can just go ahead and redraw the shoes. To add even more detail, I like to add some just, you know, different textures with the hair. So when she walks and when we add this animation, put all these frames together, I want her hair kind of like moving a little bit so to simply do this without having to go and redraw each of the pixels you can simply use the clone tool we're going to click this you know the clone stamp tool and then hold option or alt if you're on pc to select one area of the hair and then you're simply just going to drag and recolor the rest of the areas so basically what you're doing is you're referencing one point and then using that point to draw and color in other areas but if we turn off this visibility and then look at the old hair it's definitely a different texture going on right here once you're done with the first walking segment you can once again select everything that you just created and group it into another folder and you're going to title this sprite 2. You're just going to do this once again for the left side over here and just readjust everything and then once again create another third folder. Now once you have all three folders of your different sprites walking in their different phases what you're simply going to do is you're just going to first duplicate everything by hitting command D and then it'll just create a duplicate of everything and then what you're going to do is you're going to individually convert each copy of each folder into a sprite smart object. Make sure the visibility is on and then just right click it and then hit convert to smart object. And then you can just go ahead and turn off the visibility of the bottom folders, original folders. Now, the reason why we're doing this, basically, if you ever mess up or you converted everything to a smart object and then you notice later down the line that you made a mistake, you can go back and then just change it in the original folder without losing all that data when you converted everything to just one merge layer. Now that we officially have three different versions of our sprite and their different walking phases, it's time to scale up this image. Now this part I want you to listen and watch very carefully because it can kind of get a little bit messy. Come over here to image, click image size, and then what you're going to do is make sure you're in pixels, not inches, not percent, make sure you're in pixels. And make sure this little link width and height symbol is clicked on. And what you're gonna do is we're gonna change the scale from like 50 to 1000. Make sure it's set to nearest neighbor with hard edges and then hit okay. Photoshop will load a bit and once you zoom out now, you'll see that we have basically the same image but everything is a lot bigger. As you can tell, we have a full scale pixel image and now it's time to animate. All right guys, now the first thing we're gonna do before we actually move on to animating is make sure that you export each of these different walking frames as their own PNG image. Simply do that by turning off the visibility of all the other layers, you know, except the first art that you actually wanna animate. Also remember to turn off the background so that we have a transparent image. Hit file, export, and then quick export as PNG. Now name this like Sprite 1, and then you can just hit save. And do that for all the rest of the other Sprite templates, naming them Sprite 1, 2, 3. And now it's time to move on to animating. Come back here to the home of Photoshop, hit new file, and what you're gonna do is you're going to create a custom board of, let's do 1500 by 2000 works, and you can name this Sprite Walking hit save 
And now we have a new blank canvas. It's time to animate. Let's turn off the visibility of this bottom layer. And now what you're gonna do is you're simply going to drag in, and you can see right here, look at this. Look at how cool that is. If we just switch between all the different frames of our sprite, it looks like they're walking. But let's animate it actually for real. Simply drag in and import all of our subjects right here. And then what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna select them real quick and scale them up and drag them right here to the center. Now it's actually time to animate it for real, for real. Make sure all the visibility is checked on. Come over here to window and scroll down to timeline. Click timeline and boom, what the heck? Create video timeline. We are video editing in Photoshop. I actually never knew that you could do this before, but it's it's honestly really cool once you get the hang of it. Right here, we have all of our different layers and it's, it looks just like Premiere Pro or After Effects. What we're gonna do is we're going to drag and adjust each of these clips to about 10 frames each. And then I'm just gonna do, yeah, we're just gonna do each one 10 frames, drag and adjust until they all only occupy 10 frames of that. And now we have a 30 frame uh, clip going down right here. If we zoom out and we hit play, boom, a walking animation effect. But let's go ahead and just clean this up because there's a couple inconsistencies right here. First thing is you always wanna make sure that there is a sprite one just like standing in between. So you can hit Command D to duplicate this layer. And now that we have two sprite layers, we can go ahead and drag this one up forward and then drag the final sprite back. And now if we play this out, you can see that in between each of the walking, there's a middle standing part. So it looks more animated and it just honestly looks like an overall cooler effect. Once that is done, you might think, oh, it's time to export this into a GIF file or whatever. No, actually all you gotta do is hit file, save as, and then make sure it's saving as a PSD file. That's all you have to do. Sprite, walking, PSD, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this, uh, ice sprite walking test hit save hit okay and that's it but one last thing before we actually go into after effects we need a background for our sprite template we're going to go back to home and one last time we're going to create a new file now the background doesn't have to be super complex or anything like that for this background i'm actually going to create a template of 100 200 pixels and we're going to call this ice sprite background okay and now we have a cool background what you're basically going to do is just pretty much the same stuff that we did i'm going to create a basketball court just like the original munch music video i'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw in um, a green rectangular background and then i'm going to create a new layer this is really important when you're doing this pixel art always make sure that you're creating new layers for whatever new items that you're adding just because you might want to move things around and if you permanently draw on one layer only it's going to be really hard to make adjustments or changes in the future i'm going to go ahead and first add like a basketball like ring i'm going to add the layout of the court right here so i'm going to increase my pencil tool all the way up to like let's do 100 100 100 might work i'm going to increase my pencil tool all the way up until like boom we created a circle now let's go ahead and change our color back to green and i'm just going to decre decrease this to about 183 don't worry you'll see where i'm going with this don't worry you'll see where i'm going with this and then i'm just going to create another green circle inside of this previously white circle that we just made boom now we kind of have a cool basketball ring I'm gonna decrease the size once again, and we're gonna create a white circle. Once again, put this directly in the middle, 69 pixels, and we're gonna put another circle once again, directly in the middle. Boom, perfect. And just like that, look at that. That's, that's, that's dope if you ask me. It looks like we got, we have a nice dope looking basketball court. I'm gonna add that little like, I'm gonna put the little, the little white line in between. Ah, I cannot get this straight. Ah, okay, whatever. Boom, and perfect, look at that. Look at that basketball court. That is hard if you ask me. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna actually create some basketballs. That's gonna, that would be kind of cool, right? And I'm gonna increase our pencil size to about, let's say like 20 and boom, there we go. We have some basketballs going on in the frame. And then I'm just gonna increase the color up once again. And we're gonna put some orange circles directly above those previous circles. And boom, look at that. We have some shadows on our basketball. Tell me how cool that is. And then once again, I'm just gonna decrease my pixel size back to one. And let's create some lines for our basketball. Let's actually add some detail to that. Oh, that is a, that is a horrible basketball. Have fun with the background. It doesn't have to be super perfect. This is just literally just a flat image. If you look back, you know, the pick Pokemon pixel sprites, this is exactly how it was. So really have fun with the backgrounds. And now we're gonna, once again, 
scale everything up. Select everything, create a folder of it, and then create a duplicate of that folder. Remember, we always edit safe here. We're going to convert this to a smart object, and then we're going to click image, and then we're gonna click image size, make sure we're set on pixels, nearest neighbor hard edges, and then we're going to change the width to about, let's say, uh, 1,000 pixels. Boom, look at that, enlarged court side. That is, that is dope. Big thing, remember, I, I forgot to mention this real quick, to make your edges or the, you know, the top and bottom of your, of your background repeatable. So this green background right here, I can actually just repeat this court and it will look all nicely blended in. So let's say if we were to add another background below it, everything would blend in, there would be no hard edges because the way we're gonna be animating this, we're just gonna be re we're just gonna be repeating the same background so that you don't have to, you know, create any more additional animation. File, export, hit quick export as PNG, and then we're just gonna name this Ice Sprite Background 2. Let's hop into After Effects. All right, now that we're in After Effects, hit New Composition, and we're gonna call this Sprite Walking. Hit OK, and boom. Now we have a new composition. First thing is actually, I'm gonna make my composition's pixels like a square, so I'm gonna set these by 1920 by 1920 pixels so that we have a square composition. Now let's go ahead and add in our effects. I have my basketball court right here that we just created. We're gonna go ahead and scale that up by holding shift. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to drag in your PSD file, make sure the import kind is set on footage and click merge layers, hit okay, and Bruh. it is not here. Where is it? Oh, it's right here in our composition. Drag your PSD to your composition and boom. There is our animation, but it's only like, 40 frames. What you can simply do is right click your PSD folder in your project uh, media bin over here, hit interpret footage, click main, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to set the loop to like 10. Let's hit 10, hit okay, and now you see our composition is like a lot longer. We can drag that out to the full length of the video and you see Ice Spice is walking like consistent. That, dude, that's wild. Tell me that is not wild. We just created that right now. I'm gonna scale her down just a little bit so that she fits the court size. And now let's go ahead and animate our court. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to the effects and presets and search up offset. Offset. All right, now we're gonna drag this right here to our background and we're gonna come to the very beginning of the composition and we're going to set the shift center all the way right here to this to this very top of our scene right here. I'm going to click the keyframe right here. Make sure that your background is at the very top of the composition. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag to the very end of this composition. And we're simply going to adjust and drag the shift center all the way to the bottom to the exact, we're just gonna keep dragging it to the exact same spot that we started it at, but we're moving down like an entire rotation. Basically what the offset effect is doing is repeating the same background. It's just in every direction. And because we made our background look exactly the same, it blends in perfectly. And when we play this out, Ice Spice is walking on her court with a fully animated background. And if you have a little bit of like some cutting clipping with your effect, your effect kind of jumps or like jumps a frame. It looks like right here we have this really quick, you can just go ahead and adjust the time stretch of that. And that should pretty much clear things up. Bro, we literally just created a Pokemon sprite animation in Tokyo. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? That's, to that's a Tokyo tower right there. Craziest 11% tutorial yet. With that, here's the final effect. If you guys made it to the end of the tutorial, thank you again so much for watching. It really means the world. I hope at the end of this, you guys have a crazy sick effect that you can use for your music videos, visualizers, graphic design, posters, whatever you wanna do with it. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to follow us on Instagram at 11%prod. We love to see what you guys create. Remember to smash the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and turn the notification bell on for updates on future tutorials like this. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.